Today I'm out here at the Goodwood Festival of Speed with something very exciting that we are actually going to be getting in the United States market. This is the all new Ineos Grenadier. Basically what this is is a spiritual successor, if you want to say that, of the original Land Rover Defender. What happened was really rich guy decided he really loved the Defender. Land Rover was going all unibody in the brand new Defender and he wanted to buy the rights to keep building that old model. They said no. So he just went out and built his own body on frame SUV and we're going to get a pickup truck version. But here's what's really interesting about this. If you come in close, you'll notice first things first, we have a BMW inline six engine under the hood, basically the same one that we find in the BMW M340. And today I'm out here with Tommy Micah from TFL Car. So let's talk about this together because we are both super stoked about this. Uh, so what's behind that three liter inline six? Well, Alex, uh, we get a ZF eight speed transmission, torque converter automatic transmission. Now here in the UK, they also get a diesel powertrain also brought to us by our friends over at BMW. But what do you think of this company using a BMW powertrain? I think it's absolutely perfect because why design your own inline six when you can get one of the best inline sixes out there? And it really helps give this front end this unique look. It definitely has sort of a, a bit of a Defender look, but also a bit of G-Wagon with this, uh, this stacked hood. Yeah, go ahead and close it there so we can see what that looks like. This sort of V-shaped hood there. That, I really love that profile. Round headlights, very Jeep-esque there, I guess, if you will. Yeah, you got this very cool front end look. Big, chunky bumper, and then underneath you find genuine skid plates with real recovery points, and then solid axles front and back. Alex, solid axles in 2023? Indeed, solid axles front and rear. And here's a, something worth noting for all those companies out there that say that European regulations don't let you have tow hooks or recovery hooks, that's how you do it right there under that bumper so that way you don't kill pedestrians when you hit them up front. Uh, but let's talk uh, around the rest of the design. So again, definitely very boxy, very chunky. This here. Well, a lot of really cool, versatile construction. Like you got these panels on the side designed for accessories. So if you I wanted that. shovels and jury can mounts and all that can be kind of added there. And then they have additional mounting braces down the side. And it's on the front and on the rear doors there and on the rear quarter panels right here. That's a really cool touch. So you get all the way around, lots of mounting options for all your things. And in Europe, they're going to be getting this cargo version. So this is not a, a prisoner transport SUV. This is actually the cargo version. So we have that cargo panel right there. Lots of room in the back. This strikes me as the perfect vehicle for pet lovers, don't you think? Yeah, it's fantastic. It's called the utility wagon. Um, an option I don't think in the States, but even stuff like this, right? Grab handles, he had stuff on the roof, step on the tire, get up there. Super easy to access there. Um, I mean, it's such a useful vehicle. Now, power is right around 288 horsepower if I remember right out of that three liter inline six. So while it may have a lot of the form factor of the original Land Rover, it certainly has got a lot more power to hopefully get you down the road with more confidence. Yeah, and let's take a look at this rear door arrangement because this is the one thing that I'm a little bit torn about because we have this bifold side swing door. So spare tire right there on the door and then this little bitty baby door over here. I guess you could carry Ikea furniture just hanging out the back, something like that, but that does seem a little ridiculous on the small side. We also have an absolutely teeny tiny little wiper back there. What do you think about that? I mean, I think that it's it's cool. We still have the, the spare tire on the rear door. It's great look. And um, the storage area. And storage in there. But yeah, like, look, let's be honest. The, 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 the opening is so narrow here. I even think like a couple grocery bags would be too Really, really small. Really, really small. So you're going to have to use the big door a lot. Um, These taillight modules definitely seem cool to me. I don't know. I like that look. I like round lights for some reason on a car. Yeah, it's, it's cool. Now, I want to bring your attention to this one, Alex, because this is the Trailmaster trim. So this is the one that's got the locking diffs. It's got the steel wheels. Yeah. Snorkel, you know, desert air intake there, light bars. This one has like every accessory known to man on it. Uh, so let's take a look at some of the things that they've added to this model and then some of the things on the inside as well. Yeah, for sure. So up top, of course, you got the, I think it's a Rhino Rack or is it an Ineos brand? No, Rhino Rack with, um, you got the, uh, the kayak up there, got a thing of gas. You look at all these, look at all these nice mount points that they put on there around the vehicle for the easy mounting of these racks, etc. cetera. Uh, those handholds up there. Well, it's because it's got drip rails. Yeah, uh, it's the last actually, vehicle. Yeah, it actually has rolled drip rails like that. Yeah, right. Got the ladder in the back, right? Oh, here's here's a good example of some of those accessories, the mount points, et cetera, that you can add to the side of the vehicle. Those yep. are really, really great. You can pull those out. Ladder yep. on the back here. We got a shelf that shelf that pops out of the back here. Of course, that's a really nice touch as well. Cargo dividers, cargo load floor attachments. We got retainers up there, so that way your stuff doesn't fly forward in the 
uh, event of an accident. Everything's this plastic. One, yeah. yeah, everything's plastic on the side. And this one has the spare tire, of course, up on the roof because <laughs> when you put 35s on your vehicle, you get a definite workout if you uh, really need to change that spare. Alex, what do you think of this? I think it's a cool accessory. I like that little shelf. I wonder what the load capacity is. It just says, do not exceed load limit, but it does not say what that load limit is. Yeah, that's true. All right, Alex, let's make our way this way. We gotta, we gotta check out the front seat of one of these. That's true, we gotta go, we gotta take a look at the interior, because the interior is, I think, one of the coolest things for people that really wanna mod their vehicle when they're <laughs> off-roading. So, sorry, the Goodwood is definitely very crowded here. Hey, how's it going? Yeah. I, I think I've seen you on YouTube oh, as well, yeah. yeah. <laughs> The interior definitely has a very industrial design, which I really love, especially the center stack here and the ceiling, which we'll take a look at in a moment. But the big thing I noticed about the center stack is that if you get some of the base versions, this is not one, this is one of the top end ones with automatic climate control, heated seats, etc. There are actually panel blanks in here where you could obviously put your own accessories, mount them in there very easily. I love that look. We also get a big chunky manual shift knob for the high and low range in the two speed transfer case. BMW shifter that is a little bit discordant, I think, with that. Big chunky controls for the central screen at the top of the dashboard. And that is the only screen that we're gonna get in here. So it is a little bit on the minimalist side as far as screens, because if I grab the camera here, here from Tommy. Thanks, Tommy, for hanging on to that for me. If I grab the camera and go over here to the driver's side, this is all warning lights, but I love the look of the steering wheel. This kind of reminds me of the Mini. What do you think? Do you think that gives you a bit of a Mini vibe with this center chunky section there, Tommy? Yeah, a lot of that for sure. Yeah, really nice controls. I love the buttons. The airbag cover, I think that doesn't match quite as well as those, but look up here. This is totally cool. We get openable, separate sunroofs for the driver and front passenger, and check out those chunky switches. Yeah, tons of... Uh, uh, addable components for the auxiliary switches. And then here you've got your off-road modes. If this model had lockers, those would be in a little panel right here. And then you've got like your downhill assist, you got your ESC off buttons there. It's a great looking little setup. I just, I love somehow this industrial like Hummer meets Land Rover meets G-Wagon vibe. I think it's just really fantastic. What do you see over there on the passenger side? Yeah, pretty basic uh, glove box. And then interestingly enough, even though this is a UK market car from a UK company, hood pole, <laughs> 2X yeah, like BMW, yeah. is on the, the, the passenger side. And then Recaro seats, what do you think of the Recaros? They are definitely good looking. I think they're pretty comfortable. Door panel fitment seems pretty nice and actual decent cup holders. I was skipped over that, but pretty decent cup holders there. Uh, not too much storage going on because of course we have that big two-speed transfer case lockable, and all that down the there. Way. It is lockable. That is kind of a nice touch there as well. I wonder what US people would use in that lockable storage. Be sure yeah, to I comment just, below. I just, I just don't know. Uh, you know, I, I just, <laughs> Not sure what that would be. Check out the back seat. See how that goes for you, Tommy. Yeah, I will. So really big step up into the rear seat. But, and you're definitely higher than I am. Like it's definitely stadium style seating stadium here. Stadium seating a la Land Rover. Rear AC vents as well. And then USB A and USB C What's your headroom ports? like back there? It's really good. Yeah, it's definitely solid. But we still have one more thing to talk about and that is the new pickup truck. Let's go show it. Inside this pickup truck prototype, we see one of the alternate interior colors. I hope this makes it. I love that brown steering wheel look. We also get the brown leather accent on the handbrake and then over here on the oh no handle. This is the new Ineos Grenadier pickup truck. And yes, damn the chicken tax. This is coming to the United States of America. I really hope that this fabric top comes because this really gives me British Army vibes somehow. I love the look of this truck. Now, how does it compare to the American truck landscape? That is a little bit tricky. It's probably an awful lot closer to the Jeep Gladiator in terms of usefulness and size, but also capability, because we still get the solid front and rear axles, available locking differentials, etc. Towing capacity should be over 7,000 pounds. Payload capacity, probably around 1,500 pounds or so. Two spare tires are gonna be available. Now this is the one area where I think it's a little bit silly. We do get the spare tires in the cargo area back here, not under the vehicle. You can see there's another spare tire well there. And what I find surprising about that is if you look underneath the vehicle, under here there's actually a big open space where they could have put the spare tire. Not a lot is going on down there. Of course, in Europe, they're gonna get a diesel engine, which would be my preference because of its massive low end torque. In the US, of course, we're gonna get the BMW inline six and the eight speed automatic transmission. Let's check out the back seats here. Sorry, that's a push button style door. It does look like rear seat room changes a little bit versus the SUV. That's pretty logical. We see that in a lot of trucks. Obviously there's gonna be a little bit less room going on in the middle, but still plenty of headroom. Actually, I think this is probably one of the better seats as far as a midsize truck would be uh, in the US, mainly because of the width of the Grenadier. So this is definitely wider than average for an American midsize or compact truck. Let me know what you think about the Quartermaster pickup. This is the one that I am most interested in because this one I think would actually be perfect for me and, and my particular life in the forest. 
Again, I love the practicality of the all the cargo mounting points. This is what it looks like if you don't want those visible mounting points available. You can actually put this little rubbery mat on there. That's actually sort of a door protector. So uh, if you're worried about dings, you can actually mount that as an accessory on your truck, which is another nice touch. So lots and lots of options. So what do you think as the resident truck guy here, Tommy? Do you want a Quartermaster? I think it's fantastic. I mean, look, here's going to be the rub, US pricing. So the UK pricing for like the, the, the first ones coming to the UK um, with some of the off-road goodies is going to be like mid 70,000 pound region. Ouch, yeah. It's a lot of money, right? But here's the thing. Um, Jeep Gladiator, well into the 60s, right? In terms, of, in terms of its pricing. And that's with a naturally aspirated V6 gas engine. Some of the new Ranger Raptor stuff is gonna be expensive, right? So everything now is expensive. And if you want a really unique look at a practical pickup that here in the UK tows upwards of 7,000 pounds, has like 700 pounds, kilograms, excuse me, a payload, this could be a really attractive offering. Yeah, and until Mercedes brings us a G-Wagon pickup truck, this is, <laughs> this is honestly gonna be the next best thing. I mean, just look at the front end of this. This is absolutely fantastic. I just love the chunky, you know, very brutalist uh, British look of that. Yeah, it's great. Well, Alex, anything else we gotta say? I think that's about it. Just stay tuned because hopefully we'll be driving one of these just as soon as possible. In the meantime, hit that subscribe button down there and where can they find you? Uh, TFL Car, TFL Truck on YouTube are our main sites. And Alex, thanks for having me on, I really yep. appreciate it. When, uh, what I really wanna know, Tommy, tell us the inside story. When is TFL Floats for TFL Boats coming? TFL, TFL Floats and TFL Plane are well delayed, so that's gonna be a so, hot thing. Oh, set. sorry about that. But all the other TFLs are out there, and of course, the Grenadier is out there, and there is gonna be one dealer opening at least very soon in Colorado. If you want to see one in person, that would of course be the SUV version right over there. See y'all later.